Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius, and it's time for a fish room update. So today I want to do this fish room update a little bit different from how I usually do it. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and enjoy! This right here is a 55 gallon low tech planted tank. This is the oldest running aquarium that I currently keep. My main focus in this tank is to create just a nice peaceful community. It's always good to come and look at a tank with peaceful fish where you don't have to worry about aggression, where you don't have to worry about killing each other and that's one of the reasons why I love this aquarium. So the biggest school of fish are my Harlequin Rasbora slash Lamb Trap Rasbora. I have both of them in this aquarium, about 20 of them all together. You can see right there behind them, I have one of six platies. Most of them are males. I used to have a bunch of them, but I decided to get rid of the females so that the population could be more in check. Right there, you can see a baby discus. This is one of two. I bought these as hybrids. They were very cheap, and um, I really don't know how they're going to look as adults, but as they grow, they are starting to develop a little bit more color. If this guy would turn around, you can see he has some nice blues coming in the face. So I'm definitely curious to see how these guys are gonna look. Once again, two of those. I have a trio of yo-yo loaches, which are just extremely active fish, non-stop moving around. Um, I have a dwarf pea puffer front and center. Of course, begging for some blood worms. And that's pretty much all I have when it comes to fish. When it comes to plants, now my plants are not doing so well. Most of the plants in this tank are bottom feeders, meaning that they get the most of their nutrients from the substrate. By the way, this is dirt covered with gravel but yeah most of the plants in this tank are bottom feeders I have the Amazon swords one two three and four and I have a melon sword which is doing terrible then I have some pieces of Crips Spiralis and a little piece of Anubias but yeah most of the plants they feed from the substrate and now I'm starting to think that the substrate isn't really providing as it did before initially. Once again, this tank is about six years old with the same substrate in it. So I'm thinking that maybe the dirt expired, the nutrients are running low. And because of that, um, a lot of the leaves on my plants not looking too good. I'm getting a lot of holes, a lot of light colors. So maybe in the future, I'll um, redo this substrate, which is gonna be a nightmare, but my plants will be better off for it. But yeah, this is a quick look at this aquarium. Very simple, very easy to take care of, and very rewarding when I consider the fish. This right here is a 75 gallon high tech planting tank. Now from appearance, you definitely can't tell that it's high tech, the plants are not looking too good. And that's because with this tank, I'm still struggling to find balance. Balance between the amount of light, the amount of CO2 being imputed into the tank, and the nutrients in the water. Um, once I get that right, I'm pretty confident that this tank is gonna take off. It's just a matter of getting it right. So until then, I have a lot of plants covered with algae. Um, that, all right here in the front is Cryptwindite, and back there I have a ton of Crypt Paralysis, all of it covered in algae. So hopefully, pretty soon I'm gonna get some of those bristles plecos out of this tank and toss them in here. Hopefully they can clean up some of that algae. But yeah, while the plants are still trying to find balance, the main focal point are the fish. I love these fish. I could come and watch this tank for hours. Once again, the same thing with that tank. Piece of fish, lots of color. Don't have to worry about them. Um, killing each other or causing problems. So I have a mix of rainbow fish and barbs, some nice four inch Bosmani rainbow fish, a Goida River rainbow fish, iron red rainbow fish. Right here I have a big electric blue Akara, very awesome fish. 
Then I have some barbs. I have two of these torpedo barbs, which are some of my favorite fish. I have an Odessa barb right here. And then I also have a few gold barbs. And last I have, well not last, but I have four panda cory catfish, which just recently started to be active before they were hiding nonstop. And um, they're just now, like in these past few weeks, as active, active as you see them. And right there I have my seven inch gold snipe fish, which ever since he was in this aquarium, he's just become extremely active. I think it's because the black background, the black substrate, he just feels a little bit more comfortable in this aquarium compared to the last thing I had him in. And yeah, that's a look at the stock of this aquarium. Now, hopefully in the future, I got another idea. I want to combine this tank and that tank. For those of you who follow my channel, you know that this is not going to be the first attempt at doing this, but I want to try to combine it and this time do it right, pick out a good substrate, make the holding high tech and just get a nice big community of peaceful fish. So this right here is a 20 gallon beta aquarium. Now, I just did a video a couple of days ago on this aquarium, so I'm not gonna go into great detail. But what I will show you guys is that the tank is pretty empty. All I have is my male beta, my crayfish that I added in the last video, and that one little male gut, um, endler that you see right there. And the only reason he's in this aquarium is because I couldn't catch him, but I caught the rest and removed them. And that's because I have a new group of fish coming for this aquarium. I think that they're gonna look a lot better in contrast to the blue better. They have a nice opposite color. And also they're gonna swim a lot more in the open and just be a lot more visible. And I think it's gonna make the tank a little bit better. But yeah, this tank is still a work in progress. Um, eventually when the plants grow up, when these new fish come, it's probably gonna be one of my favorites. Now you really don't see any of the crayfish out. And that's because I just did a water change a couple hours ago and all these rocks came tumbling down and they were just flying all over the place. So they're pretty spooked about that. So maybe it'll be a couple of days before they get reconfident and start swimming out as before. Next we have this 29 gallon Hillstrom Aquarium where all the fish in this tank originate from Asia. Pretty soon this giant goldfish is going to be removed. He's gotten so big because he spends the majority of his day grazing on that algae that grows in the background which I love. I love the look of that hair algae. But yeah he's going to be going in a pond and once he's out the way I'm going to do a rescape, hopefully add some plants and make this tank pleasing for the main stars, my Hillstream loaches, and hopefully they will go back to breeding because ever since this goldfish has been in the tank, um, my Hillstream loaches are not as active, they hide a lot, and they haven't been breeding. So once this guy is out, hopefully this tank can become theirs again, and they could be just as enjoyable as they were before. But yeah, I wanna give this tank a little bit of a rescape, add some plants. Right here you can see a, my male Neon Gobi, who definitely calmed down with his aggression, so that's an awesome thing. This female was out a little bit earlier, but now she's somewhere in the rock work. Above, I have some white cloud minnows mixed with some leopard danio doing awesome. Um, you can see that leopard danio right here. It's hard to focus on them, but you can see them with a fat belly. I think it might be a female, so hopefully I could get a spawn pretty soon. But yeah, this tank is awesome, but it needs some work. So in a few weeks, when it's warm enough outside, and when I say warm enough, I'm talking about just to the point where the koi and the fish outside are a little bit more active. Right now, when it's in the 40s, they pretty much just stay still without eating. Once they start to eat, then this boy is going outside. So this right here is a 55 gallon aquarium. Not much to say about this tank. There's only two fish in this aquarium. Hopefully temporarily, I gotta give these guys a new home. So to the left, you can see my beautiful female red devil. She is the sister of the male red devil, which is upstairs. Both of these were born in a pond about two years ago, and they're definitely some awesome fish. 
However, she should be in a 210 upstairs. The only reason why she's not is because her brother will kill her. So I had to bring her down here. Um, and there's pretty much no other aquarium that I could put her in without, without her doing too much damage. But she's a very gorgeous fish. I'm staying about four feet away from the aquarium so that she doesn't hide. But I love her color and I love her behavior. It's just, can't find a tank perfect for her yet. So either I'm gonna rehome her or she's just gonna stick in this aquarium until I can find something good for her. And to the right, you can see the face of my male Jack Dempsey cichlid. This is the second one that I bought that was like $10 at Petco. And it was like six inches. I bought him because he was so cheap. Not considering that when I brought him home, he definitely was gonna fight with the male that I already had in my 210. So because of that, he's in this aquarium because he has nowhere else to go. Um, no other aquarium fit for him. So he's in this tank until once again, I either rehome him or find a good place for him. my 40 gallon low tech reef aquarium I say low tech because all i have is a filter a light diy refugiums and a heater oh and circulation pumps but yeah not all the fancy gadgets and i'm definitely getting some awesome results um kind of too much results you can see these yellow polyps dominating this aquarium i have hundreds of them all over originally they started out on this rock they slowly climbed up here they took over this entire rock the good thing is that this um, platinum clownfish loves it. He likes to host it, as you can see right now. Um, then it made its way over here, and somehow it landed back there as well. So yellow polyps are definitely taking over this aquarium. I have my Duncan coral over here doing good. Back there I have my um, devil's hand leather coral, which is growing nicely. Green star polyps growing nicely against the wall. My Montipora coral, if we come to the side, you can see you can't see anything but um it has a nice size about maybe eight inches in di diameter and i have a trumpet coral right here in the center along with a few zoas and definitely enjoying this aquarium just i just wish i had a little bit more control of the corals or maybe i i planned the position of the corals a little be better when i um, first started as far as fish i have a standard clownfish looking awesome I have a platinum clownfish. They're not paired together, so that's why they stay on two sides of the tank, um, which sucks, but the good thing is that they're not killing each other, so that's not too bad. Right here, I have my dwarf angelfish. Still a little bit spooky, but compared to when I first bought them, definitely a lot more in the open. I have two pajama cardinals, both of them some very awesome fish. The other one is somewhere. And then somewhere inside the rock where I had a, a red stoplight cardinal, and um, I wish I could catch that fish, you can see him right there. I wish I could get this guy out of this aquarium because he's the reason why I don't have any shrimp because he's been eating them. But yeah, that's a look at the 40 gallon reef aquarium. everyone so this right here is a 1 to 25 gallon grot aquarium this tank has a wide variety of fish and it's definitely one of my most enjoyable tanks just because all these fish have a lot of potential so I could go on and on talking about this tank so I'm gonna keep it short and simple and just give you guys a quick introduction to some of the fish in this tank so right here is my bitcher who I'm surprised to see he's out in the open the only reason he's out is probably because he's hungry him and a few other fish in his tank are very picky eaters, so he only wants frozen foods. So because he hasn't eaten any frozen fish in a couple of days, he's out looking to see what's going on. And um, awesome to see him. He's about maybe five inches and definitely a nice oddball fish. Up here I have a trio of some mixed cichlids. You can see the Cuban cichlid right to the right. Right here is the electric blue who is leaving the scene. I have a Vija Cinespillum, if I said that right. Back there I have one of three Mesohera Sonatas. These are some very awesome fish. The most dominant is somewhere 
he's somewhere, but he definitely looks very awesome. He's just not too confident in front of the camera, so you won't be able to see him until he's maybe a little bit bigger. Look at this reaction from the Electric Blue Texas and the bitch here. He's trying to figure out what he is. And that's one of the reasons why I love this tank. These juvenile fish, they're very curious. They do get into a lot of fights, but um, it's just awesome to see them exploring and just learning and everything like that. Right here's my peacock bass. Pretty soon I'm gonna have to take him out of this aquarium because he's looking at some of his tank mates as food. Um, once again, he's one of the picky eaters and I haven't fed them any frozen foods in a long time. Well, not in a long time, in like two days. So because of that, um, he's showing these colors and he's looking at his fish, trying to figure out which one he can swallow. So maybe this week or next week, he's gonna be going in a 210. Now the reason why I didn't, look at him. Well, he's pretty much stalking and hunting his tank mates. But yeah, the, the reason why I didn't add it to the 210 earlier was because I'm pretty sure my other two peacock bass are gonna pick a fight with him. And I wanted him to be big enough just to handle it. But he's giving me no choice and he's gonna have to go. Back there is a fish I just added right before I started this video. That is a calf my flower horn I was growing out in this aquarium um, for the past three weeks and I decided let me try and see if this fish can live in a community. If I could get this flower horn to live in a community, he definitely will be an awesome show fish. I've seen it done before and I think I could, I could do it myself. It's just a few um, things I gotta do. One of the things I could, gotta do is just be very attentive and monitor this fish. Look at him being so aggressive. But he's just been to think a couple hours. So hopefully once he finds his place in a hierarchy, he calms down. Right there is the dom most dominant of my Mesoharris. Um, he's shy, so he's not gonna come out. But when this fish starts to come out, you're gonna see that he's definitely a very beautiful fish. I have a Jack Dempsey cichlid right here. This was actually sold to me as a Feste cichlid. And you can see it's clearly a Jack Dempsey. A very aggressive Jack Dempsey as well because he's trying to um, establish himself. But hopefully it's a female. If it is a female, it's going in that tank. And hopefully I could get a pair from that guy. And then I could keep that guy. Right here is a Bristol's Pleco female. I have a male in this tank as well. But he's inside this little thing right here and I just can't get him out. I take the whole thing out of the water and he stays in there. Puts it back in and he just refuses to come out. I'm tempted just to break it up, but I wanna give him a little bit more time. There's no algae in this aquarium because of this light that I have. So pretty soon, hopefully he starves and comes out looking for food. I have right here my African leaf fish who's surprisingly pretty high ranking in his aquarium. The most dominant is my Red Spot 7, who is about four inches, so he has the size advantage. And it's good to have him as the most dominant because he is a very mild cichlid, so he's not gonna overdo it with aggression. And in second place is this African leaf fish. He's about two inches. And um, once again, I'm surprised to see that he's more dominant than some of these other cichlids. Back there, I have a green chromide cichlid. And he's the reason why if you come over here, you can see all this anacris is just empty. He's big on vegetation, so he's been eating all these leaves, which isn't a bad thing for me. Um, but eventually, maybe it will be a bad thing when I try to add them to my community tanks because you know I like adding plants to my aquariums. Right there is a better look at the red, um, the, what is it? At the flower horn. Very beautiful fish, just needs to get us act in order. Then I have a few dither fish. I have some Congo tetras. A few Buenos Aires Tetra, my, my um, silver dollars. I like to stay in the shadow, so it's really hard to get to my camera. And I have a Pictus catfish, just like the one I have upstairs, a four line Pictus catfish. Um, this one is about five inches, one upstairs about 10 inches when they're, and he grows pretty fast, so pretty soon I'm gonna be adding them upstairs to the 210 as well. Okay everyone, so this is the last tank in the fish room and it is my 125 gallon African cichlid tank. Now I do plan on making some changes to this aquarium. First of which, all these Mabuna are gonna be gone. Maybe I'm gonna grow them out in another aquarium and then find the most dominant or just the best looking and then re-add them to this tank. But yeah, I gotta get most of those guys out. I also wanna get a lot of these females out. I have this female Hippo Point um, from Lake Victoria this female Fireline Meloto. I have a female Taiwan Reef. Um, well, she's old, so I'm gonna keep her. 
I think this Malawi dolphin is a female, so all the female fish, I wanna get rid of them. Also, wanna remove some of these Mabuna. This guy, maybe. This guy, I'm gonna keep him because I got a lot of history with him. But um, that red zebra, a few of these guys, and I just wanna clear out, do a nice rescape. Might even move my clown loaches upstairs to the 210 and maybe keep just about nine or 10 fish. Um, African cichlid tanks, a lot of people go with stocking them just very heavily, but now after watching a few videos and just thinking, I think this tank will be better off if I keep less fish. That way my fish can have more space, they could get bigger, the water could stay cleaner, and um, just the tank be more enjoyable. everyone so this tank right here is 210 gallons this tank is not in the fish room it's upstairs so the main stars of the tank are center screen my two azul peacock bass I'm growing out that juvenile peacock bass and I'm pretty sure he's gonna look awesome but the question is will they accept him right here is the Oscar cichlid the Oscar started growing out at the same time as the peacock bass it's just he's a lot more bolder and he's a lot less pickier when it comes to food, so that's why he was able to come up here so quickly. Down here we have the gold datinoid, one of the slowest growing fish I've ever kept. But he's out here begging for food. His main problem is that he only wants live foods. And because of that, um, he goes a lot of days without eating because I'm not going to go buy and feeders for him every day. Um, same thing with the Hujetagar. Hujetagar stopped growing at about 7 inches. And he also wants live foods and live foods only. The worst two things about those two fish. Right here is my pick this catfish. I showed you guys my juvenile downstairs. This big guy is about 10 inches, but not too active. Over here I have a red tail giant karami, about seven inches. Pretty aggressive, but still living in the shadows. This is my show Jack Dempsey. He has a lot more blue sheen on the sides, so I keep him up here. That red devil is the brother to the female red devil that I have downstairs. Overall with this tank, the goals are just to continue with the growth of this little paludarium up here and just to allow the fish to mature. Eventually, once again, I want to get a bigger aquarium. Some of these big fish are going to go into that tank and I can bring up some of my juvenile growouts into this tank. Hey everyone, so we're gonna finish off this video with a quick look at the backyard pond. Right now, I'm not looking too presentable. I had to build a bunch of barricades all around it because one of my dogs kept jumping over to take a dump in this area, and that's definitely not the area you wanna find dog poop, so. For now, I have these barricades until eventually I figure out what to do. That's, the black one is the culprit. But yeah, other than that, fish are doing awesome. They're ready to eat right now because it's in the 40s up of 40s close to 50 so they're building up an appetite um, if you follow me on Instagram you know that a couple days ago I posted a video how this thing was covered with snow and here we are about three days later and no snow at all and that's crazy but um yeah fish doing awesome I gotta get this pond a little bit clearer it needs a little bit more work and once I get it a little bit more presentable I'll give you a more detailed video but YouTube that's been a look at my aquatics any questions let me know what you guys think in the comment section below um, so I'll finish off with a little feeder. So I'm gonna set that down right there. A little bit of that in there. And toss a little bit of food in a palm. And give you guys a finale with the koi taking a little bite. But yeah, I'll give some more palm videos in the future. Some more fish tank updates and stuff like that. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because you already know more is coming. Catch you guys later.